If you haven't set up an email account on your device yet, when you tap on the mail icon, this will appear with different options you can add. The options are Microsoft Exchange, Mobile Me, Gmail, Yahoo, AOL, and other. Here, I'll show you how to set up a standard Gmail account. On the first setup page, you need to enter the name you want for outgoing emails, the email address, password, and description or label for this specific account. Once all the information is filled in, tap Next in the top right hand corner. Once four check marks appear, all the information is verified. The next screen gives you different synchronization options. Here, email is always active for the account, and you can choose whether or not you want to sync your calendar and notes with this account. Enabling calendar synchronization will ask you what you want to do with existing calendars on your iPad. You have the option to keep the calendar on your iPad or delete it. Here, I've selected to keep existing calendars on my iPad. Here, you will be prompted to confirm your selection with the reminder that this may cause duplicate entries. So if both calendars were exactly the same, you would want to choose Delete Calendar instead of Keep. Tap Save to finish setup, and this will take you to your most recent email and access to your inbox. If you already have an email account set up on your device, you will need to access the settings menu to add additional accounts. Here, select Mail, Contacts, and Calendar Settings. To add an account, tap Add Account near the top of the screen, and this will open the same page as before with different account options. To add an account not listed here, select Other. Here, you have options to add a full email account, and below, options to add just contact or calendar synchronizations. Here, I'll select Add Mail Account. Just as before with the standard Gmail setup, you need to enter your name as it appears on outgoing emails, your email address, password, and a description. Once this is complete, tap Next. At the top of this screen, you will need to select whether the account is an IMAP or POP account. In this case, I am adding a POP account. Next, you will need to enter the incoming mail server information for hostname, username, and password. If you do not know this information, you can obtain it from your email service provider or in the case of a work email account, your employer's IT department. The next step is to fill in the outgoing mail server information for hostname, username, and password. Once this is complete, tap save and your device will verify your information. If all is correct, you will be returned to the mail, contacts, and calendar settings menu. And at the top, you will see your new account. In this case, I have the Gmail account we added in last section and the Mobile Concepts Work account added in this section. Now, when you open your inbox, you are taken to the most recent email for the account just added. When you open the inbox, you can tap on this icon to select different inboxes you wish to open. You have options to open a merged all inbox or each inbox individually for Gmail and mobile concepts. Below this is the account information for the accounts above. Here I'll open all inboxes. This inbox is a merged inbox of all accounts on your device. Here emails are organized chronologically.
Tapping the mail icon will open your most recent email for the inbox you have selected. Tapping this icon will open your full email inbox with emails listed chronologically. Emails that have a blue dot next to them are unread emails. Tapping this icon again, you can select which account you want to open. Below this, you can access account information. Again, I'll open all accounts. Scrolling down in your inbox, you can access older emails. Swiping your finger left to right on an email will give you the option to archive the email. Tap the red archive button to complete. Archiving the email will remove it from your device inbox, but not the actual account. Tapping the edit button in the upper right hand corner will open these circles next to each email. Tapping on these circles, you can select specific emails you want to archive or move. Here, I'll archive these three emails. Tapping edit again, I'll select one email and this time choose move, opening up this folder tree displaying all valid destinations you can move the email to. Back to just the standard message view, you can use these arrows to move forward and backward between emails. Tapping on the details button will show you not only who sent the email, but all recipients it was sent to or CC'd to. BCC recipients are blind recipients and are never seen. Tapping this, you can select to mark the email as unread. Tapping hide will hide the recipients. Tapping this icon gives you the option to move this specific email to a different folder. Tapping this icon will archive or remove the email from your inbox. Tapping the arrow, you can reply, forward, or even print the email. Finally, tapping this icon will open a blank email to compose. Turning your iPad horizontally will display a larger full QWERTY keyboard, making it easier to type. The first thing you will need to do when composing an email is to enter recipients into the To field. These can be specific email addresses or contacts names you have email addresses saved for in your address book. Tapping here, you can enter recipients you want to CC or BCC your email to. Tapping on From Email opens this menu where you can select which email account you want to send your email from. The From field will always default to your default email account first. Here I'll select my work account. Next, I'll add Meeting as the subject. Now I'm ready to start composing. Once you have finished typing your email and you are ready to send it, tap send in the upper right hand corner. The status of your sent email will be shown here. If you want to save a draft on your iPad, again, tap the Compose icon here. Type the email that you want to save as the draft, and when you're finished, tap Cancel in the top left-hand corner. This gives you the option to delete the draft or to save it. Here, I'll save it as a draft. To access your drafts, tap on the inbox icon and tap mailboxes. Now, near the top, you can open your drafts folder and at the very bottom is the draft we just saved. To 
access email settings, tap on the settings icon, and select mail, contacts, and calendar. As we covered before, at the top are accounts on your device and the option to add additional accounts. Just below this is the fetch schedule setting. By default, the device is set to push. This means as new emails are found on the server, they are automatically pushed to your device. Turning push off, you can set a schedule that your iPad follows to automatically check for new email. The options are every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, hourly, or manually. Selecting manually, your device will only check for new email when you refresh the inbox. Having data set to push is the most efficient and quickest way to get your email, as well as the way I recommend. Tapping advanced, you can set up a custom fetch schedule for individual accounts. Under Mail Settings, you can select how many messages you want your inbox to display. Just below this, you can select how many lines of the email you want the preview to show. Next, you can set up a minimum font size. Below this are additional on-off toggle switches where you can customize your email experience even more. Here you can enable to show the 2CC label on received emails, ask before deleting, load images, to organize emails by thread, and in the next section down to always BCC myself. I would recommend turning on Ask Before Deleting. This will prompt you to confirm the delete. Here you can customize your signature. This will show up at the bottom of emails sent from this device. By default, it is set to Sent from my iPad. Change the signature to your liking, and if you don't want the signature, simply delete the text. Below the email settings are settings you can use to customize your contacts and calendars, such as sort order and sync. To remove an email account from your iPad, tap on the settings icon, and again, select mail, contacts, and calendar. Tap the account you want to remove and the account information will appear with the option to delete the account at the bottom. Tapping delete account, you will be asked to confirm your change. Tap delete to completely remove the account or cancel to void your request. Now that you have personal information on your device, you may want to secure it with a passcode lock. To set up a passcode, select Settings, then General Settings here. Around the center of the menu are options for Auto Lock and Passcode Lock. Auto Lock selects how long your device will idle before automatically locking requiring you to wake your device back up. Here, I'll set this to two minutes. Now, I'll turn a passcode on. Selecting passcode will open this menu. To enable a passcode, select Turn Passcode On from the top. For demonstrational purposes, I'll set this passcode to 1234 you will need to confirm the passcode. As you can see now, the option at the top says Turn Passcode Off. Selecting Require Passcode, you can select how long once the device sleeps or locks itself you want to require a passcode. Here, I'll keep it on immediately. Now, when the device is locked and you unlock it, a passcode will be required. If you want a more complex passcode than four digits, you can turn simple passcode off. Upon turning simple passcode off, 
you'll be prompted for your original four-digit passcode. Now, you are able to enter a passcode over four digits, and you can use the full QWERTY keyboard for passcode characters. Here, I'll set the passcode to password. Again, you will need to confirm your passcode. Now, when you unlock your device, you will be prompted for your new passcode. Once you type it, tap enter, and your device will unlock.